Good Yom Tiv, Chag Sameach. I know that this year we won't be able to gather together on the last day of Pesach for the Yisker service in Shul. But I thought that there are components of the Yisker service that we can share together, albeit virtually. I'll share a Yisker speech. I'll shorten it a little bit, but I'll share a Yisker speech. And we can listen to the tune, to the liturgy, that ancient haunting prayer service that Yisker provides us. And then we've uploaded our Yisker booklet. It's available at a link in the email. Please, I urge you to print it out before Pesach. And then on the eighth day of Pesach, on Thursday, we can all open up our booklets at 11 a.m. and say Yisker together as a community throughout Ottawa. I want to tell you a story of a rabbi, a rabbi in New Orleans 40 years ago. One day he went to the corner market where they had the most beautiful produce. And he overheard a little conversation between Mr. Miller, the owner of the market, and a young boy who was in ragged clothes, clothes that were a bit too small on him, but his eyes told a different story. Mr. Miller said, Johnny, how are you doing today? To which Johnny responded, I'm doing all right. How's your mom doing? Ah, oh, she's regaining her strength. Thank you for asking, Mr. Miller. Johnny, is there any way I can help you today? And he said, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just admiring those beautiful watermelons that you have in stock. Mr. Miller said, can I send you home with some? Johnny said, ah, I have no way to pay you, but thank you so much. Mr. Miller said, but you must have something to trade me for. Johnny said, I do, I have my prized marble. Mr. Miller said, let me see it. He pulls his marble out of his pocket, a blue, shiny, big marble. Mr. Miller says, it is a beautiful marble and I'd gladly trade it, but I'm more of a red marble guy. Here, do you have a, do you have a, do you have a red marble at home that's similar? And Johnny said, yes, I do. So he said, okay, here you are. Take this bag of watermelons, bag of grapes, bag of blueberries, bring them home. And next time you're in the area, make sure you bring that red marble of yours. Johnny said, I absolutely will. Thank you so much and walked off with his produce in hand. The rabbi listened to this as Mrs. Miller, the wife of Mr. Miller came on over and explained that Mr. Miller had the same arrangement with several boys that didn't have much money in the neighborhood. He would send them back with produce, telling them to bring back the red marble. And then of course they always brought back the red marble. He'd send them with more produce, this time changing his mind that he'd rather a green marble or an orange marble. The rabbi left the store feeling very inspired, never forgetting that story. A couple of years later, he, was, he moved to Colorado, to Denver, to take on a different congregation, a different pulpit. But several years after that, he found himself back in New Orleans officiating at a wedding when he heard that Mr. Miller had passed away. And he said, I don't know if the Millers will remember me, but I am going to visit the Shiva. And he went. And in front of him, speaking to Mrs. Miller, were three young gentlemen. All of them were sharply dressed, nice haircuts. One of them was in a military uniform. They hugged and they kissed Mrs. Miller and then placed something in her hands. There was now the rabbi's turn. And he said, I don't know if you remember me, but I'll never forget the story of Mr. Miller and his marbles. Mrs. Miller, with her eyes glistening, she said, those three young men who just left, those were the boys I had told you about. And she lovingly picked up her fingers and in her hands were three exquisitely shined red marbles. And she explained that they just told me, those three boys, now young gentlemen, they told me how they appreciated, how much they appreciated the things that Jim had traded for them. And now at last, when Jim could no longer change his mind about the color of the marbles, now they came back to pay their debt. And she went on. She said, we've never had great wealth in this world, but right now, Jim would be the happiest man in America. I cannot remember a time in history that has pushed us more to consider our red marbles, what our priorities in life are, and are they in line with our deepest, most spiritually and meaningfully sensitive part of ourselves. A triumvirate of circumstances, of experiences, has converged in the most powerful and poetic symmetry, pushing us to focus, inspiring us to internalize and live with our red marbles at the forefront of our lives. It's the holiday of Pesach, 
when we strip our lives, our diets of so much, chametz versus matzah, we forego, we get rid of all of the fluff, the leaven of our lives and spend eight days focused on the matzah, the absolute essentials, those red marbles in our lives. It is a time of yisker, a time when we encounter our mortality. Life takes on a sense of urgency, pushing us to focus on what is truly important. Again, on those red marbles in our lives. And we now are living in the middle of a pandemic. May it end speedily. When the differentiation between the essential and the non-essential has never before been so apparent, so obvious to us, a time to focus on those red marbles of our lives. This is our time, our time to think about the path that our lives are leading, the deeper parts of ourselves, growing spiritually and emotionally, connecting ever deeper with our souls and the divine part of every single one of us, a time to look outwardly at our family, being present for them, catering to them and supporting them and to our fellow human beings as we look even more outward our communities, our humanity, supporting and cultivating communities that strengthen each and every one of the individual members. This is our time, we are being told, to ascertain the red marbles of our lives and go forward, holding on to them, grasping on to them more tightly than ever before, cherishing them and allowing them to occupy that central part of our lives that they should have been forever and ever. It is now, we now will turn to the Yisker service with a time, three minutes of reflection, a time to reflect on the red marbles of our lives. <laughs> Dayan almanot vavi etomim Hametze menucha nechona Al kanfe ashechina Bimalo Kedoshim utehovim Kezohar hakiya Meirim umazehirim Ba'avur she'anu Mit palelim leiloi nishemotem lachen bal hachamim yastirem beseter kenafav leolami. Oh, oh, oh. 